valuable advice. Jason Dorsey was a typical college student when he unexpectedly met his first mentor, a local entrepreneur who had been asked to speak to his business class at the University of Texas. When Brad challenged the class by defining success as something greater than just making lots of money, Jason was intrigued and risked asking him to be his mentor. During their first meeting, Brad asked Jason about his plans. He replied that he planned to finish college, work on the New York Stock Exchange, get an MBA, start his own business, and eventually retire at 40. Once retired, he planned to work with hard-to-reach youth to make sure they got a good education and a respectable job. Hearing this, Brad asked Jason how old he would be by the time he got around to helping these young people. Jason guessed he'd be about 45. Then Brad asked a life-changing question. Why wait 25 years to start doing what you really want to do? Why not start now? The longer you wait, the more difficult it might be for young people to relate to you. Brad's observation made sense, but Jason was only 18 and living in a college dorm. He asked, How do you think I could best help people my own age if I started now? Write a book they will actually want to read, replied Brad. Tell them your secrets for feeling good about yourself even when everyone else is so negative. Tell them what it takes to ask someone to be your mentor. Tell them why you have so many job opportunities and you're only 18 years old. So on January 7, 1997, at 1.58 a.m., Jason started writing his book. Because he didn't know he couldn't do it, he completed the first draft of Graduate to Your Perfect Job just three weeks later. Jason published the book himself, started speaking at schools, and began mentoring other young people. By the time he was 25, he had spoken to over 500,000 people, been featured on NBC's Today Show three times, and seen his first book become a course in over 1,500 schools. Jason is such a compelling speaker and motivator that soon the schools were hiring him to train their teachers and counselors as well. He is known as the Gen Y Guy. And his latest venture is a new company that helps executives and managers learn how to motivate and retain young employees. Best of all, Jason is still learning from his mentors, all five of them. When Jason was only 26 years old, he won the Austin Under 40 Entrepreneur of the Year Award in the category of education. Today, at 36, Jason speaks worldwide, from India and Mexico to Norway and Egypt, to companies such as Mercedes-Benz, Four Seasons Hotels, SAS, and Visa. He's given over 1,000 speeches and seminars to audiences as large as 16,000 people. He's written two more books, Why Size Your Business and My Reality Check Bounced, and he also writes the popular Maverick Minute column for Success Magazine. And just think, if Jason had not taken the risk to ask a stranger to be his mentor, he'd probably just be getting that MBA right about now. Be prepared to return the favor. Be prepared to give your mentors something in return, even if it's something simple such as keeping them updated on industry information or calling with new opportunities that might benefit them. Look for ways to give to your mentors. Help others, too. What a great reward to any mentor, to eventually have their former protege out in the world mentoring others. Ask someone who has already done it. Success leaves clues. Anthony Robbins, motivational speaker and author of Awaken the Giant Within. When I was promoting the first edition of this book in 2005, I was scheduled to be on a morning news show in Dallas, Texas. When I was in the green room getting my makeup put on, I asked the makeup artist, as I often do with almost everyone I meet, what is your dream goal? Oh, I want to own my own salon, she replied. That's great. What are you doing to make that happen? Nothing. That's a bad strategy, I said. Why not? I don't know what I have to do to own my own salon. Well, I said, I have a radical idea that might help. What's that? she asked. Why don't you go find someone who already owns their own salon and ask them how they did it? 
Wow, that's a great idea, she exclaimed. It never ceases to amaze me that people don't figure this out earlier. But at least you now know what to do when you don't know what to do. Go ask someone who has already done it. Help Breaking the World Record When 43-year-old Austrian skydiver Felix Baumgartner decided to break the records for the longest and fastest freefall, he asked retired U.S. Air Force Colonel Joseph Kittinger, the previous world record holder, who was now 84 years old, to help him break the record that Joe set in 1960. Joe, willing to help someone younger break his own records, readily agreed. In addition to mentoring him, he also played the role of CAPCOM, Capsule Communications, as Mission Control's primary point of radio contact with Felix during the ascent of the helium-filled balloon that lifted him 24 miles, 39 kilometers above the Earth. On October 14, 2012, Baumgartner jumped from 127,852 feet, about 24 miles, for the highest skydive ever. More than four miles higher than Kittinger's record-breaking jump of 19.5 miles in 1960. With Joe's help and supported by the peak performance team at Red Bull, Baumgartner broke the records for the highest man balloon flight, longest jump, nine minutes and nine seconds, and fastest freefall at 833 miles per hour. 1,357.64 kilometers per hour, achieving Mach 1.25 and becoming the first person to break the sound barrier outside a vehicle before landing safely in the desert of New Mexico, after his death-defying four-minute, 19-second freefall. Despite the momentous day, there was one record Felix didn't shatter. After problems with his helmet fogging and falling faster than even he expected, he stuck with the contingency plan of pulling the chute early at 5,000 feet, which kept him from reaching the longest freefall record. But he said he was happy to leave that record intact for his mentor. Fifty-three years after he said it, the four-minute, thirty-six-second record still belongs to Joe Kittinger. Network Your Way to Success Networking is the single most important marketing tactic to accelerate and sustain success for any individual or organization. Adam Small, founder of Nashville Emerging Leaders Aside from mentors, there are many other people who can also help you up-level your game. People who can be found through constant and proactive networking. In fact, one of the most important skills for success in today's world, especially for entrepreneurs and business owners, is networking. Jim Bunch, the creator of The Ultimate Game of Life, once stated, Your network will determine your net worth. In my life, this is proven to be true. The more time I have spent consciously building and nurturing my network of advisors, colleagues, clients, students, customers, and fans— the more successful I have become. Business and careers are built on relationships, and relationships form when people meet and interact with each other over time in an authentic and caring way. And, as I'm sure you are aware, statistics confirm over and over that people prefer to do business with people they know, like, and trust. Here are some reasons to get more involved in networking if you are a business owner. Generating Referrals and Increased Business The referrals that you get through networking are normally high quality and most of the time are even pre-qualified for you. Over time, you can follow up on these referrals and turn them into clients. So you get much higher quality leads from networking than from other forms of marketing. This opportunity to increase sales is probably the biggest reason people network, but there are other advantages as well. Expanding Opportunities When you get together with other motivated business owners, there is an opportunity for things like joint ventures, client leads, partnerships, speaking and writing opportunities, business or asset sales, investment opportunities, and much more to emerge. Creating Connections The old adage, it's not what you know, but who you know, is so true in business. If you want a really successful business, 
then you need to have a great source of relevant connections in your network that you can call on when you need them. Networking will provide you with a great source of connections and really open the door to talk to influential people you might not otherwise be able to connect with. And remember, it's not just about the person you are directly networking with. That person will already have other complete networks he or she belongs to that you can tap into as well. And, as we'll discuss in a moment, it's not just what you know or who you know. It's how well you know each other that counts. Obtaining Useful Advice Having like-minded business owners to talk to also gives you the opportunity to get advice on all sorts of things related to your business or even your personal life. Networking is a great way to tap into advice and expertise that you wouldn't otherwise be able to access. I asked my friend Ivan Meisner, whom CNN has called the father of modern networking, to share his VCP process of networking with you here, because it addresses one of the major mistakes people make when they network. Ivan is the founder and chairman of BNI, Business Network International, the world's largest referral organization, with over 170,000 members in almost 7,000 chapters in 55 countries. BNI has fostered more than 5 million referrals a year, resulting in $6.5 billion worth of business generated for its members. Networking is all about relationships by Dr. Ivan Meisner Dr. Ivan Meisner is a New York Times best-selling author. He is the founder and chairman of BNI, www.bni.com, the world's largest business networking organization, and is also the senior partner for the Referral Institute, an international referral training company. For more details on Dr. Meisner and his latest book, Networking Like a Pro, visit www.thesuccessprinciples.com forward slash resources. Speaking at a recent networking event attended by more than 900 people, I started my presentation by asking the audience, how many of you came here today hoping to do a little business, maybe even make a sale? The overwhelming majority of people raised their hands. Then I asked, how many of you are here today hoping to buy something? No one raised a hand. Not one single person. This is the great disconnect about networking. If you're already attending networking events hoping to sell something, you're dreaming. Don't confuse direct selling with networking. Effective networking is all about developing relationships. Of course, there will always be someone who says, but Ivan, I've made a sale by attending a networking event. But for most people, stumbling upon a new customer or making an on-the-spot sale happens about as often as a solar eclipse. And when most people at the event are also trying to sell, which means virtually no one is there to buy, you're crazy if you think the odds are in your favor to sell at a networking event. So why go? You go because networking is more about farming than it is about hunting. It's about developing relationships with other business professionals. Sometimes you'll want to attend a networking event to increase your visibility. Other times you go to establish further credibility with people you know. And sometimes you might attend simply to meet a longtime friend or associate to further that business and move to profitability. In any case, truly successful networkers focus more on moving through the VCP process than on closing deals. Visibility The first phase of growing a relationship is visibility. You and another individual become aware of each other. In business terms, this individual, who is a potential source of future referrals or even a potential customer, has just become aware of the nature of your business, perhaps because of your public relations and advertising efforts, or perhaps through someone you both know. This person may observe you in the act of conducting business or relating with the people around you. Soon, the two of you begin communicating and establishing links, perhaps a question or two over the phone about product availability. You may become personally acquainted and work on a first-name basis, but you know little else about each other. Form several of these types of relationships, and you'll emerge with what's called a casual contact network, a sort of de facto association 
based on one or more shared interests. This visibility phase is important because it creates recognition and awareness. The greater your visibility, the more widely known you will be, the more information you will obtain about others, the more opportunities you will be exposed to, and the greater your chances will be of being accepted by other individuals or groups as someone to whom they can or should refer business. Visibility must be actively maintained and developed. Without it, you cannot move on to the next level. Credibility 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 means being reliable and worthy of someone's confidence. Once you and your new acquaintance begin to form expectations of each other, and those expectations are fulfilled, your relationship can enter the credibility stage. If each person is confident of gaining satisfaction from the relationship, then it will continue to strengthen. Credibility grows when appointments are kept, promises are acted upon, facts are verified, and services are rendered. The old saying that the results speak louder than words is true. Failure to live up to expectations, to keep both explicit and implicit promises, can kill a budding relationship before it has a chance to grow. What's worse, this failure can create visibility of a kind you don't want. To determine how credible you are, people often turn to third parties. They ask someone they know who has known you longer, and perhaps even done business with you. Will she vouch for you? Are you honest? Are your products and services effective? Are you someone who can be counted on in a crunch? Profitability Of course, a mature networking relationship, whether business or personal, is where profitability occurs. Is it mutually rewarding? Do both partners gain satisfaction from it? If it doesn't profit both partners to keep the relationship going, it probably will not endure. So how long does it take to move through the various phases of a developing relationship? It's highly variable. In fact, it's not always easy to determine when profitability has been achieved. A week? A month? One year? In some cases, such as when an urgent need arises, you and the other person may proceed from visibility to credibility overnight. The same is true of profitability. It may happen quickly or it may take years. Most likely, it's somewhere in between. Of course, much depends on the frequency and quality of your contact with each other, but most especially on the desire of both parties to move the relationship forward. This is why short-sightedness at any stage can hinder or even stop the full development of the relationship. Perhaps you're a customer who has networked and done business with a certain vendor off and on for several months. But to save pennies, you keep hunting around for the lowest price ignoring the value this vendor provides you in terms of service, hours, goodwill, and reliability. Are you really profiting from the new relationship, or are you stunting its growth? Perhaps if you gave this vendor all your business, instead of continuing to shop around for better pricing, you could work out terms that would benefit both of you. Profitability is not found by bargain hunting. It must be cultivated, and like farming, it takes patience. What's another major benefit of the profitability stage of a relationship? Referrals come into you from people with whom you've networked. When you've established an effective network, when you've entered the profitability stage of your relationships with many people, your finely tuned referral generation system will send you referrals and customers as a result. Profitability happens when there are benefits going both ways whether referrals, information, support, or something else. Your ultimate goal should be a meaningful and mutual payoff in the relationship. Of course, this profitability stage of a relationship isn't limited to making money from a new customer or client acquired through a referral. It may come in the form of a connection to someone who can help you launch a new initiative or otherwise grow your business. It may include access to a mentor or a professional advisor, or a contact in another industry who can help you expand your market share or enter a new market. It might be the ability to delegate more of your workload, gain substantial free time for your hobby or personal interests, or spend more quality time with family members. Janet Switzer, my partner Patty Aubrey, and I know the value of becoming connected to a robust and well-connected network. We've generated millions of dollars in business from the connections we have developed over the past 40 years. 
Between us, we've amassed over half a million blog readers, half a million Facebook fans, and millions of customers, clients, and students who follow our success principles work. We've developed personal contact lists with hundreds of key individuals who can help out with advice, direction, a name, an idea, resources, marketing assistance, and more. My networks include the Transformational Leadership Council, the National Council for Self-Esteem, the National Speakers Association, the Speakers and Authors Networking Group, plus connections to networks enjoyed by colleagues in the human potential movement. At any time, Janet and I can ask each other, who do we know who can help with this new initiative? Confident that we can go to our contact list and get our needs and wants addressed within days. That's the real profitability of a network. Tips for Successful Networking Ivan Meisner also makes valuable suggestions for effective networking, whether you are at a designated networking event or at a potential networking event like a Chamber of Commerce meeting, conference, convention, or trade association meeting. His tips for increasing your visibility, knowing your own value statement, creating small groups that are open for others to join, and much more are detailed on our companion website, www.thesuccessprinciples.com forward slash resources. Scroll down to Principle 44 and click the link you find there. The opportunity to network is everywhere. 80% of success is showing up. Woody Allen, Academy Award-winning director, screenwriter, actor, and comedian. You never know where you'll find your next connection. Early one spring morning, Gene McDonald stopped at a Dunkin' Donuts for coffee. The line was out the door. But longing for that caffeine fix, she decided to wait. While she was standing there, the woman in front of her commented, With this kind of traffic, I should own one of these stores. With that opening, Jean started up a conversation and mentioned she was an entrepreneur who helped women look good and feel good. She went on to tell her she was with Mary Kay Cosmetics and that it was a wonderful opportunity. The woman in line told her she was a Girl Scout troop leader and she was looking for someone to come talk to the girls about skin care. Jean took her information and told her she'd be in touch. Meanwhile, the woman behind them heard their conversation and told Jean she was a nurse and was interested in Mary Kay's hand treatment products. She asked if Jean would come to her office and provide some pampering. Jean took her information, too. But it didn't end there. The man behind her then joined in, telling Jean that his sister loved Mary Kay products, but she'd lost her representative. Jean took his sister's contact information, too. Three strong leads, all just from chatting with people in line, and all before 7.30 a.m. But the story doesn't end there. Because at this point, all Jean had were leads. Strong leads, but leads nonetheless. Ninety-nine percent of all success in life is following up. Kent Healy, co-author of The Success Principles for Teens. Networking is so much more than just meeting people. It is following up and following through and continuing to connect and reconnect over and over again. Jean connected with the Girl Scout leader and she pampered twelve girls and several mothers. The troop leader loved what she did so much that she became a new consultant on her team. The nurse was so pleased with the products that she met with Jean individually for a one-on-one -on -one appointment and also became a new Mary Kay consultant. Now, here is the kicker. The sister of the man she spoke with in line was the local mortician, and she told Jean she loved the look of Mary Kay Cosmetics on all her customers. It turns out the products even gave luster and life to dead skin. Ultimately, she introduced Jean to several of the local funeral homes, resulting in about $3,000 worth of product sales. As a result of these connections, Jean's team became the leaders in the community for the Girl Scouts. They developed business with many nurses, doctor's offices, and funeral directors, and Jean's team earned their first pink Cadillac. The moral of the story is you never know where you'll find your next connection. And once you find that connection, you must follow up.
to get the results. The richest people in the world look for and build networks. Everyone else looks for work. Robert Kiyosaki, author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, What the Rich Teach Their Kids About Money That the Poor and Middle Class Do Not. Networking is not just for business owners. On May 7, 2014, Miriam Laundry set a new Guinness World Records title for the largest online book discussion in a 24-hour period by reaching her personal goal of empowering 100,000 children. The Guinness World Records adjudicator verified a total of 33,695 official comments. Unofficially, there were 103,813 people from 29 different countries participating. When Miriam looked back at her achievement, she said the success principle that helped her the most was networking. During the last week of my Train the Trainer program, Miriam shared her breakthrough goal with a fellow participant. Her goal? To empower 100,000 children to believe in themselves by June 1, 2014, through being read her children's book, I Can Believe in Myself. Her strategy for accomplishing this was to go for an official Guinness World Records title. When the fellow trainer asked Miriam why she chose that project and that date, she explained that May 7th fell during Mental Health Awareness Week in Canada, and her purpose for writing the book, which stemmed from losing her niece to suicide, was to teach positive mental health to children. In a stunning coincidence, the trainer told her about a colleague of his who founded the Winspiration Day Association, also celebrated every year on May 7th. He quickly asked if he could pass along Miriam's book to his colleague, and a couple of months later Miriam got a call from Switzerland. It was the founder of the association who had been looking into her project and wanted to present her with a Winspiration Day Award for 2014. The founder fully supported Miriam's official Guinness World Record attempt. He even put her in contact with an international company called Niken, which asked her to speak with the managing director of Niken Europe. It seemed that everyone who heard about her goal wanted to help her. The Niken organization helped her finance the official Guinness World Record attempt, including paying the cost of making it an international event. Niken hosted a global conference call with their offices in 26 countries, where they interviewed Miriam about her vision and her reasons for wanting to help children. The Niken organization suggested she start a crowdfunding campaign where they could all contribute to help pay the 15000 Canadian dollars cost associated with bringing a Guinness World Records educator to her city of St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. Overwhelmed by the outpouring of help, Miriam didn't fully realize the magnitude of support until she started receiving daily book orders from countries like Germany, Australia, Austria, the Philippines, Russia, the Netherlands, the United Kingdom, and many more. The secret of her success, she says? Networking. And it all started with her being open to sharing her goals with others. She reflects, The most incredible thing to me is that when you share your heartfelt purpose and vision with others, they want to jump on board and help. You never know whom you are talking to, who they know, and what their triggers are. Sharing my goal with that one participant resulted in me being awarded the prestigious Winspiration Day Award, the financial backing for my goal, the Guinness World Records title, and most important, having thousands of children being empowered, all learning the I Can mentality all over the world. Principle 45. Hire a personal coach. I absolutely believe that people, unless coached, never reach their maximum capabilities. Bob Nardelli, former CEO of Home Depot and Chrysler. You would never expect an athlete to reach the Olympic Games without a world-class coach, nor would you expect a professional football team to enter the stadium without a whole team of coaches, head coach, offensive coach, defensive coach, and special teams coach. Well, over the years, coaching has moved into the business and personal realm to include coaches who have succeeded in your area of interest.
and who can help you get from where you are to where you want to be faster and easier. One of the most powerful habits of the successful. Of all the things successful people do to accelerate their trip down the path to success, working with a good coach is at the top of their list. A coach will help you clarify your vision and goals, overcome and support you through your fears, keep you focused, confront your unconscious behaviors with old patterns, expect you to do your best, help you live by your values, show you how you can earn more while working less, and keep you focused on your core genius. Worth more than money. I have had many coaches who have helped me achieve my goals. Business coaches, writing coaches, marketing coaches, and personal coaches. But without a doubt, the coaching experience that most helped me leap forward in every area of my life was when I hired a coach to help me take my business to the next level. What were the results? First and foremost, I immediately doubled my free time. I delegated more tasks, scheduled vacations rather than merely thought about them, and hired additional staff that ultimately positioned my business to earn more. And that was just in the first few months. Not only did my business benefit, but my family did, too. For me, coaching wasn't just about making more money, although a big part of coaching is focused on making more money, managing it better, and settling on a financial plan that gives you the kind of freedom you want. It was about helping me make better decisions for myself and my business. The truth is, most coaching clients are smart, very smart. Yet they still know the value of assessing someone who can be objective, honest, and constructive about the options they are facing. Why Coaching Works Executive coaches are not for the meek. They're for people who value unambiguous feedback. If coaches have one thing in common, it's that they are ruthlessly results-oriented. Fast Company Magazine Regardless of whether the program is designed to achieve a specific business goal, say, increasing your real estate listings, or whether it is specifically designed to help you simply gain more clarity and progress in all aspects of your personal and professional life, a coach can help you determine your values, vision, mission, purpose, and goals. Determine specific action steps to help you achieve those goals. Sort through opportunities. Maintain focus on your top priorities. Achieve greater balance in your life while still accomplishing your business or career goals. As humans, we tend to do only some of what we are required to do, but virtually all of what we want to do. A personal coach can help you discover what you truly want to do and can help you determine the steps and take the actions necessary to get there. Canfield Coaching Because of my personal success with coaching and my firm belief in the power of coaching to do the same for others, I developed my own coaching program to support people in implementing the success principles. My experience has been that people often tend to shy away from the changes that would allow them to create the life of their dreams. The true value of coaching lies in how it assists you in making these changes. Whether it is replacing bad habits that have been holding you back, or refining good habits into great ones, a coach knows how to help you get more from yourself and your environment. Our coaches offer accountability, encouragement, insight, motivation, and tough love, all of which accelerate you getting from where you are to where you want to be. They also help you move out of your comfort zone and build the daily disciplines of success needed to achieve your goals. Graduates of our coaching programs have often accomplished more than they thought possible and in a shorter amount of time than they thought was realistic. For them, coaching multiplied both the size and speed of their success. Here are a few excerpts from the thank you letters I've received from graduates of our Canfield coaching program. Since starting this journey, I have created a consistent flow of business, have built a stronger team of consultants, and continue to work toward my goal of becoming a director within my direct sales company. I have also created improved quality time with my two young boys, my husband, and our family as a whole. Trish C., Ohio Pile, Pennsylvania. 
I read the Success Principles book and was really excited, but I had no idea how to absorb all the information. My coach has made it so manageable. I enjoy my daily rituals, meditating, affirmations, the rule of five, reviewing my day, planning for the next day, and also the mirror exercise. These are all a normal part of my day now. My affirmations are beginning to truly materialize. I was so excited when my affirmation really happened in the exact way I visualized it. I have broken old habits and learned new ones to improve my organization skills. I can now break down my goals into achievable tasks. I have the confidence to ask and seek advice or help whenever I need it. I now put myself first, and I don't feel guilty for saying no to people. I can't believe how much my life has changed in such a short time. Sally Ann D. Topal, New Zealand Here's a typical success story. When you offered me the opportunity to speak to one of your coaches, I had to think about it for a few hours. I'd been wishing for a coach for years, but my shyness had stopped me from pursuing it. The timing couldn't have been more perfect. I was on the verge of going live with my new business and also had a few books in the works, but I knew that my blocks were preventing me from living up to my full potential. The time had come to break through the last few barriers, and I knew I was going to need one-on-one -on -one help to push me to the finish line. I took a deep breath, made the phone call, and said goodbye to my old defeatist ways. The transformation that has taken place within me, thanks to you, your program, your excellent book, and my wonderful coach, is nothing short of astonishing. My coach immediately spotted that I was a perfectionist, something I had always been very proud of. But he helped me to see how my perfectionism was having a very negative effect on me and my performance, and steered me towards something much better. Excellence. I was on the verge of a total burnout. I was feeling completely overwhelmed by everything I felt I had to do, and I was drowning. Your book was a great help to me in this area. Your time management system has helped me to stay focused, use my time more effectively, and to rest without feeling guilty. I feel so much better now. My copy of The Success Principles is completely dog-eared. I frequently refer to it, and I often find myself quoting it to others. The book is brilliant on its own, certainly, but the greatest benefit of having a coach to guide me through it was that I was forced to follow through. Someone was watching me, and I could not chicken out and skip the things that made me feel uncomfortable. I did things that terrified me, like setting dates to goals. I thought my brain might explode, but I did it. I made scary phone calls. I learned to introduce myself to strangers and navigate social events. I asked people for help. I said no. I learned to focus on my successes and to keep a log of them. I look in the mirror every day and tell myself what a wonderful person I am and what a great job I'm doing. I find myself automatically doing things I've learned. They have become a habit. I find the things I've learned easily come to mind when I need them. It's like I now have a coach in my mind who speaks up and guides me whenever I need it. There is absolutely no comparison between the way I functioned four months ago and the way I live my life now. Everything is so much better. Pavan V. Appledorn, Netherlands I have carefully assembled some of the best coaches in the entire industry, and personally trained all of them. I know from the results that we have consistently produced for more than 5,500 people in 108 countries, that they will also help you produce phenomenal results in every area of life. In short, they can help you change your life. In the Canfield Coaching Program, you have a choice between either individual or small group coaching over the telephone or by Skype. Regardless of the format, the key to ongoing success is regular contact. Over the course of the sessions, you'll work together with your coach to develop goals, strategies, and a plan of action that is positive, desirable, and realistic. Many coaching programs provide support in between calls through email. At Canfield Coaching, we take it a step further by providing phone access between sessions to the entire Canfield coaching staff. To learn more and arrange a free phone session that will introduce you to coaching, go to www.canfieldcoaching.com forward slash 
SP-45. Coaching for Writers Without a doubt, one of the best things I've ever done to accelerate my success was to become a published author. You can share your ideas and influence so many more people by writing and publishing a book. And being a published author gives you credibility. It establishes you as an expert. And for many people, it serves as a brochure describing your work that other people pay for. And with today's myriad of ebook and self-publishing options, it's easier than ever. After two years of teaching disadvantaged teenagers in an inner-city high school and a job corps center, I wrote my first book, A Hundred Ways to Enhance Self-Concept in the Classroom, in 1976. That book sold over 400,000 copies, which changed my career and my life almost overnight. I became a recognized authority in the education field and attracted a ton of paid speaking engagements. More important, I started hearing from teachers all across the country about how they were using my strategies to positively impact their students. That first book ultimately led to co-creating the Chicken Soup for the Soul series, which now includes 46 New York Times bestsellers and over 500 million copies sold around the world. And that really changed my life. Since becoming an author changed my life in so many ways. One of my missions is to help others get their books out and share their messages with the world. To accomplish that, I teamed up with Steve Harrison, who has helped more than 12,000 authors, including me with the Chicken Soup series, to successfully write and promote their books. To create the Best Seller Blueprint, an online training course, including some live coaching calls, that provides step-by-step -step instruction on every aspect of writing, publishing, and marketing your book. In addition to my own proven methods, we've also included strategies and advice from such best-selling authors as Tim Ferriss, The 4-Hour Workweek, John Gray, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, Marcy Shimoff, Love For No Reason, Ken Blanchard, The One-Minute Manager, and many others. You can access free author training videos, which also preview the full course, by going to www jackcanfieldauthortraining.com Learn how to coach others. Finally, I believe everyone should learn to be a coach. If you know the basic steps and skills of coaching, it'll make you a better parent, spouse, teacher, manager, network marketer, athletic coach, even a better friend. If you would like to add coaching to your skill set, a good resource is Coaching for Breakthrough Success, Proven Techniques for Making Impossible Dreams Possible, a book I wrote with Dr. Peter Chi, the CEO of ITD World in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. The book details 30 principles that explain the role and benefits of coaching and presents our situational coaching model that covers the six paradigms for success, goals, exploration, analysis, releasing, decision, and action. It offers many techniques for helping people overcome barriers and achieve results. Principle 46 Mastermind Your Way to Success When two or more people coordinate in a spirit of harmony and work toward a definite objective or purpose, they place themselves in position, through the alliance, to absorb power directly from the great storehouse of infinite intelligence. Napoleon Hill, author of Think and Grow Rich We all know that two heads are better than one when it comes to solving a problem or creating a result. So imagine having a permanent group of five or six people who meet once every week or two for the purpose of problem-solving, brainstorming, networking, encouraging, and motivating each other. This process, called masterminding, is one of the most powerful tools for success presented in this book. I don't know anybody who has become super successful who has not employed the principle of masterminding. An Old Idea That's New Again Napoleon Hill first wrote about mastermind groups in 1937 in his classic book Think and Grow Rich. And all the world's richest industrialists, from the early 20th century to today's modern icons of business, 
have harnessed the power of the mastermind group. It's the one concept achievers reference most when they credit any one thing with helping them become a millionaire. Andrew Carnegie had a mastermind group. So did Henry Ford. In fact, Ford would mastermind with brilliant thinkers such as Thomas Edison and Harvey Firestone in a group they held at their winter mansions in Fort Myers, Florida. They knew, as millions of others have discovered since, that a mastermind group can focus special energy on your efforts in the form of knowledge, new ideas, introductions, a vast array of resources, and most important, spiritual energy. And it's this spiritual aspect that Napoleon Hill wrote about extensively. He said that if we are in tune with the mastermind, that is, God, source, the universal power, infinite intelligence, or whatever term you use for the all-powerful creative life force, we have significantly more positive energy and power available to us, power that can be focused on our success. Even the Bible talks about this. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Matthew chapter 18, verse 20. Mastermind, therefore, is both the creative power that comes to us from each other and the creative power that comes to us from above. A Process for Accelerating Your Growth The basic philosophy of a mastermind group is that more can be achieved in less time when people work together. A mastermind group is made up of people who come together on a regular basis, weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly, to share ideas, thoughts, information, feedback, contacts, and resources. By getting the perspective, knowledge, experience, and resources of the others in the group, not only can you greatly expand your own limited view of the world, but you can also advance your own goals and projects more quickly. By being part of an effective mastermind group, you will see opportunities you would not otherwise see and get help you would not otherwise get. A mastermind group can be composed of people all drawn from your own industry or profession or composed of people from a variety of walks of life. It can focus on business issues, personal issues, or both. But for a mastermind group to be powerfully effective, people must be comfortable enough with each other to tell the truth. Some of the most valuable feedback I have ever received has come from members of my mastermind group confronting me about overcommitting, selling my services too cheaply, focusing on the trivial, not delegating enough, thinking too small, and playing it safe. Confidentiality is what allows this level of trust to build. Out in the world, we are usually managing our personal and corporate image. In a mastermind group, Participants can let their hair down, tell the truth about their personal and business life, and feel safe that what is said in the group will stay in the group. New Thoughts, New People, New Resources When you form your mastermind group, consider bringing together people from different professional arenas and people who are above or ahead of you professionally or financially and who can introduce you to a network of people and resources you normally wouldn't have access to. Though the benefits of masterminding with people outside your field may not seem obvious now, the truth is that we all tend to get stuck in our own field of expertise. Seeing through the same narrow lens, and doing things the same way everyone else in our industry does. But when you assemble people from different industries, professions, or fields of study, you get lots of different perspectives on the same subject. Henry Ford was an assembly line expert. Thomas Edison was an inventor. Harvey Firestone was a corporate management genius. So their mastermind group brought together diverse talent that could lend different perspectives to one another's challenges, whether they were legal, financial, or relational. Other mastermind groups have helped members start or salvage businesses, change jobs, become multimillionaires, become better parents, grow as teachers, become better advocates for social change, improve our environment, and more. How to Assemble a Mastermind Group Regardless of your group's purpose, an important key is to choose people who are already where you'd like to be in your life, or who are at least a level above you. 
If your goal is to become a millionaire and you are currently making only $60,000 a year, you will be better served by gathering together with people who are already making more than you. If you are concerned that people who are already achieving at a higher level than you might not want to be involved in a group with you, remember that you're the one convening and facilitating the meeting. You are organizing, supporting, and building a forum for other people's growth and masterminding needs. Many people at a higher level will want to become involved simply because they'll get to play at a game they might never take the time to organize for themselves. They'd probably be delighted to mastermind with the other people you're going to invite, especially if some of the others are already playing at their level. What's the ideal size for a mastermind group? The ideal size of a mastermind group is five or six people. If it is any smaller, it loses its dynamics. If it is too much bigger, it gets unwieldy. Meetings take longer, some people's needs may go unmet, and personal sharing is minimized. However, larger groups with as many as 20 people that periodically meet in person for a whole day or more can operate very successfully. Another option to consider is to join a professionally facilitated mastermind group or to have your mastermind facilitated by a professional facilitator who takes responsibility for everything from call reminders to running the meetings according to the proven formula for success. Conducting a Mastermind Meeting Mastermind meetings should be conducted weekly or every other week with all members of the group in attendance. They can be conducted in person, over the phone, or via Skype or Google Hangouts. About 60 to 90 minutes is an ideal length of time. If meetings are to be any longer than 60 minutes, it's important to have the full commitment of each group member to allocating that much time. For the first few meetings, it's recommended that each member get the entire hour to familiarize the others with his or her situation, opportunities, needs, and challenges, while the other members ask clarifying questions and brainstorm ways they can support that person. During later meetings, participants each get a small amount of time, about ten minutes each, to update the others, ask for help, and get feedback. On an ongoing basis, each meeting should follow a proven format of steps to ensure that all participants get their needs met and therefore stay fully engaged. You'll find a complete kit for assembling a mastermind group and conducting mastermind meetings, complete with the seven steps and a helpful worksheet at our website, www.thesuccessprinciples.com forward slash resources. Scroll down to Principle 46 and click on the link. She Masterminded Her Way to Success In 2010, Jill Juka of Athens, Greece, left my Breakthrough to Success training with a commitment to be part of a mastermind group she had formed with five other attendees from different countries. When the economic downturn in Greece began affecting everyone locally, Jill found herself looking forward to e-meeting with her global mastermind group on Skype and Google Hangouts, spending one hour every other week not using the words crisis, default, unemployment, or debt. Before long, Jill learned through her mastermind group about TEDx Chennai and ended up giving her first international speech there. On the plane trip home, an idea took shape in her mind. What if instead of just ideas worth spreading, the wonderful concept of TED, Jill created a global platform that would spread solutions? She could offer interactive workshops at one-day events, then upload the videos to YouTube so that people around the world could benefit from them. With that concept, Better Life Day was born. At first, with the economic crisis being so deep in Greece, and with local citizens actually protesting in the streets, Jill was embarrassed to discuss her idea of creating an event called Better Life Day with friends and colleagues in Athens. But when she discussed the idea with her mastermind group, they were ecstatic. Jill recalls, I will never forget the way they encouraged me to go ahead and create Better Life Day in Athens. I never would have gone ahead without their constant encouragement and support. The first Better Life Day in Athens was jam-packed with 500 participants plus another 300 live-streaming views, 
and was supported by 70 volunteers and 57 corporate sponsors. The feedback was unbelievable. People were walking through corridors of the venue as if they had been given happiness pills. The team got tons of emails and Facebook messages thanking them for the positive, solution-based outlook the event had given them. And the biggest gift of all was, because of the event, Jill met her husband. The following November, Sergio Sedas, another Breakthrough to Success graduate and TEDx speaker, produced the second Better Life Day in Monterrey, Mexico. With more than 4,000 people participating in interactive, solution-focused workshops given by presenters from the United States, Mexico, Canada, and Bermuda. Throughout it all, Jill's mastermind group was there with ideas, encouragement, and solutions. Not bad for an investment of two hours a month. But above all, said Jill, is the feeling that I have five souls with whom I can share my feelings, from complete devastation to overwhelming joy. That's priceless. Accountability Partners Instead of or in addition to being in a mastermind group, you might choose to work with what I call an accountability partner. The two of you agree to a set of goals that each is working toward and agree to talk regularly by phone to hold each other accountable for meeting deadlines, accomplishing goals, and making progress. You agree to call each other at agreed-upon times, every day, every week, or every other week, to make sure you are both following through on your planned actions. Knowing that you'll be reporting to someone provides the extra motivation to get the job done. This is an especially useful relationship to develop if you're a solo entrepreneur and work from home. Knowing that you'll be talking to your accountability partner tomorrow morning makes it more likely you'll be productive today. You can also ask your partner to share ideas, information, contacts, and resources. You can pitch your partner on your latest idea and ask for feedback. What's your opinion? How would you proceed? Your partner might agree to make a call for you, give you a contact name, or email you some information he or she has already collected on that subject. It's important to remember that an accountability call is not a coaching call or social call. Accountability partnerships work best and last longest when calls are kept short and focused. An accountability partner can also provide enthusiasm when yours is waning because of obstacles, distractions, setbacks, or failures. The key to a successful accountability relationship is choosing someone who is as excited about reaching his or her goal as you are about reaching yours. Someone who is committed to your success and theirs.